Throughout history, four US presidents have been successfully assassinated. The most recent one was John F. Kennedy. He was shot while in his car in Dallas, Texas, November 1963 with his wife Jackie and the governor of Texas, John Connolly. Welcome to another alternate history scenario. Today we're going to talk about what if John F. Kennedy was not assassinated and what if John F. Kennedy had lived. Please like, please subscribe, thank you. In 1964 we are at the height of the civil rights movement. John F. Kennedy is running for re-election with Lyndon Johnson again as his running mate. He fears that if he changes running mate, Texas will vote Republican and he will lose in the electoral college against the Republican candidate Nelson Rockefeller. Rockefeller is a big supporter of the Civil Rights Act and that loses him support in the South, even though many of them also distrust Kennedy. In the 1964 election, Kennedy is narrowly re-elected by winning the states of Ohio and Missouri, as well as, of course, Texas. In the next years, the Kennedy administration is going to be deeply involved in the Vietnam War. However, John F. Kennedy decides against bombing in the North. In 1966, the Republicans make gain in the midterms, and this loss for the conservative Southern Coalition is enough for the Civil Rights Act to finally pass in the summer of 1967. In the response to the Civil Rights Act, the anti-war movement, and the war in Vietnam, Republican Richard Nixon is sent into the White House in 1968. He defeats the incumbent Vice President Lyndon Johnson. Nixon wins most of the South and the Midwest. And he cruises to re-election in 1972 against the senator from Minnesota, Hubert Humphrey. But there is one very big unanswered question so far in this timeline. What about the Kennedys? In 1964, Ted Kennedy wins his brother's former Senate seat as in our timeline. Robert Kennedy, however, remains Attorney General throughout the eight years that his brother is President, and he first ran for the Senate in 1968, challenging and defeating incumbent Republican Senator of New York, Jacob Javits. His margin of victory is quite similar to that of Johnson in the concurrent presidential election. In 1976, with Richard Nixon having resigned over Watergate, Gerald Ford is the incumbent President. He runs for re-election with Bob Dole as his running mate. Robert Kennedy wins the Democratic nomination, and he chooses former Texas Governor John Connolly. They are able to defeat Ford and Dole with a narrow victory in the popular vote and the Electoral College. Then, in 1979, disaster strikes. While on a visit to Tallahassee, Robert Kennedy is fatally shot by a member of the Black Panther movement. He is put into a coma and is unable to perform his duties as president, so Vice President Connolly assumes office. Kennedy is still in a coma by election of 1980, when Connolly runs with uh, his new running mate, David Pryor, a senator from Arkansas, and in a landslide defeats former CIA director George Bush and his running mate, Senator John Warner of Virginia. The biggest issue of the day is the war between Iran and Iraq. In this conflict, the United States under President Connolly supports Iraq, and by election day 1984, Iraq is on the verge of winning. However, the war is also extremely unpopular among large parts of the American electorate. And on the presidential election in 1984, former California Governor Ronald Reagan defeats Vice President David Pryor. For the Vice Presidency, Senator Paul Laxalt of Nevada defeats Governor Michael Lukakis of Massachusetts. It is one of the biggest landslides in history. And in 1988, Reagan wins a 50-state landslide against the Senator from Illinois Paul Simon and his running mate Delaware Senator Joe Biden. Many credited Reagan's victory to his ability to put an end, a victorious end to the Iran-Iraq war with the Iraqis victorious. He could also thank a booming economy and the apparent collapse of the Soviet Union. In 1992, America is in a new world order. The Soviet Union has collapsed and with more domestic issues being on the table, Bill Clinton and Al Gore defeat Bob Dole and Colin Powell. This happens again in 1996. This time, Dole is running with Jack Kempf, a representative from New York, as his running mate. And the rest is history. So how would this be different? The Kennedys would not suffer through two very bloody assassinations. They would still have one, which would end in Bobby Kennedy being put into a coma instead of dying by his wounds. Otherwise, it would be pretty similar. Anyway, thank you all for watching, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.